Hey guys, this is Mike here at Area 51. I'm back at you with another video. This is going to be a short, quick video, and it's going to be an update to our MoTeC series that we have going on. Uh, we had MoTeC Part 1, which was installation of MoTeC, installing you, uh, getting the workbook downloaded and installed for you guys. Uh, then we had Part 2, which focused on driver development and that part of the workbook. <clears throat> and then we had part three, which was setup building. Excuse my voice. I'm a little soft. I've been sick, uh, but I still want to record uh, this video for you guys. And, um, and so there's going to be some supplemental videos coming out. This is going to be one of them about MoTeC. And this was going to be uh, something to be able to fix a bug that's kind of in there. I noticed is I just put this workbook out for you guys. And um, I noticed when we got the, the Texas that, um, the track didn't automatically appear and generate. And um, I figured out a way to get it to work. Um, but the problem is, is that you load in new tracks from iRacing. Uh, some of them have GPS coordinates and GPS data uh, in, baked into the telemetry file. And that allow, that's what MoTeC uses by default uh, to generate the tracks. Uh, the problem is some of those, some of the tracks don't have that data uh, in the telemetry file, and Texas is one of them, and where the oval, the NASCAR oval series is are at Texas this week, uh, I, it, this issue came up, and and so I, I worked hard, I looked through the stuff, and I actually ended up reaching out to Scotty Stevens on our team, and he had figured out how to get around this. Um, there's another option that I'm going to show you here in just a second inside of MoTeC that will allow you to use the G-forces that it records in the telemetry in order for it to draw uh, the track based on the, you know, uh, the telemetry from the car, you know, what, what directions the car travels in, the G-forces in the car and everything. Um, it will draw the track for you. You just have to change an option. So what I'm going to do right now is show you guys how to get a track drawn for every track you have telemetry for, no matter if it has that GPS data in it or not. So let's go ahead and head into MoTeC right now. Okay, guys, so I have already fixed Texas, okay? So we're going to go in, and I'll bring Texas up first since I've already fixed it. You can see what it looks like. This is some telemetry that I ran today in Texas. And you can see Texas is right here, and there's the track. Uh, and it is, I don't know if it looks perfectly like Texas. I know Texas has that quad oval that's a bit squared off right here, um, and the track that it's drawing is not squared off. The reason that the track is not squared off and it's drawn here for you is because your car doesn't really travel in those sharp corners. Your car kind of smoothly travels through that quad oval squared off section. Uh, so since it's based off the actual path that your car takes, um, it's not going to look as squared off, but it does the job. Um, this method will get a track there that, that looks similar to what you're racing. I um, mean, it gets the job done for all these maps showing you where your lift points and that kind of stuff is. So th this is what the finished product looks like. So let's go, and I want to teach you guys how to do this. So I'm going to pull up a track that I know uh, already that the GPS data is not there for. So let's go down. I know Nashville, the Nashville Oval, um, is not the, does not have the GPS coordinates in it in MoTeC. So let's go ahead and open up Nashville. As you can see, when it's missing the GPS data, this is what you'll find. There'll be no picture of a track. And there's going to be, you know, all kinds of these section labels for who knows what in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and do the track editor. So once you get into the track editor, um, before in the video, we showed you how to generate sections. This time I'm going to show you how to generate a track that's missing. So you go to generate track. And when you do, the method by default is always set to GPS. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the method for drawing the track to a lateral G forces and speed, lateral G and speed. So I want to check that bullet point and then we're just going to hit OK. And there you go. It is now drawn. That is the, that is the Nashville Oval. Uh, I believe this is Nashville Fairgrounds. Um, and so... And it may not be, but I'm pretty sure this is Nashville Fairgrounds. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you're going to see now the actual uh, 
oval here. Nashville Fairgrounds is kind of like a paper clip, kind of a rounded, bulgier paper clip, but it's just it's it's a for sure oval short track. And so so it's there, but now we have all these messed up sections. And this is similar to what I showed you guys before. We'll go back into the track editor. And now we're going to tell it to generate uh, to generate the the sections. So generate sections. Now, last time in the original Motec series we did it, I told you guys to leave this at 50%. Well, I've found that that's not good because it actually puts the sections in part of the turn. And we want the sections to be split at the beginning of the turn. So really what you want to do or for turn threshold factor is to go to zero. I feel like that gets you the best results. So we'll go to zero, hit OK. And there it generates the turns right there. And... Um, and so then we can split the turns apart and we're going to split it and we're going to split turn one. And then we are going to go name all these. So this is turn four, four. This is turn three. This is the back stretch. This is turn two. Turn one is already labeled, and this is the front stretch. There we go. And everything, we're just gonna make sure that all these right here is where it says section type, straights or corners. We're gonna make sure they're all what they should be. Corner, corner, straight, corner, corner. Got it. And so there we go. I hit okay. And there we are. Now you have the sections labeled correctly, and we have a track generated where the GPS data was missing. And so that's how you do it. I'm going to go ahead and save the workbook with that saved in it. So next time that I open up any kind of a Nashville file, it could be this telemetry file, or it could be any telemetry file that is for Nashville. Um, it will say, hey, it will have this saved in the workbook, and you don't have to do this again for Nashville or the Nashville fairgrounds anyway. Um, so that's how you do it, guys. That's how you... Um, create tracks when the GPS data is missing. Um, this method works very well. Um, we were just, it even works with road courses. Um, we were just at Watkins Glen last week. And so I spent a lot of time there in the MX-5s last week at Watkins, Watkins Glen. And I just want to take a second to show you guys that it even works for road courses. This is a telemetry file that I had from last week in Watkins Glen. As you'll see right here, um, it's in there, and I've already went and labeled all the turns just like they are in real life for an iRacing for this particular track. And um, let me go uh, and grab a uh, different map, maybe a bigger map of the track. Um, and there's Watkins Glen map again. It's, it's showing up all this. You fix the track map in one place, and then it shows up in all of the different. Uh, it shows up in all the different uh, sheets here uh, in the workbook. So you just have to fix the track one time, and it's good to go. And so and here's a bigger version of it. But this is Watkins Glen down from turn one all the way through, and the bus stop back there, and out and around. And this is the Cup NASCAR version of Watkins Glen. Uh, so, yeah, it even works on road courses. This is a tried and true method uh, that will get these tracks drawn for you, uh, these track maps drawn for you when the GPS data is missing. Well, guys, I hope you found this video helpful, uh, teaching you how to, to get these track maps uh, drawn in the MoTeC for you, uh, for your track position, uh, whenever the MoTeC or uh, the telemetry logs from uh, iRacing does not have the GPS data in it. Hope you find it useful. Hopefully it's, it's got you on the right path here. Um, you know, one of the hardest and most difficult things about, um, about using MoTeC is just the fact that um, the software is not super user friendly. Um, and, you know, in order to get faster in iRacing, really, um, you need good telemetry data, one for your setups and two for your driver development in order to get faster. And I think that's people's biggest hurdle 
is the fact that it takes somebody who's tech savvy really uh, to really use MoTeC to its fullest potential and not to even be intimidated by MoTeC enough not to use it. So we want to get you guys past that hurdle. Uh, we want to get you guys over that hurdle and we want to get you guys using MoTeC, using telemetry. Uh, feel free to come back and ask us a question um, and maybe we can add something MoTeC for you. Maybe we can do another video explaining something in more detail for you guys. Um, so you know, our goal is, is, is to not have that as a barrier for you guys uh, to get faster. So we're here to help you out. And I hope that you guys uh, learned something from this quick video. Uh, before you leave, if you have not subscribed yet, just ask you down below the video, hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel grow and we really appreciate it. Uh, and if you would like, there's a bell icon down there. You can click that bell icon, get notified anytime that we go live uh, with these great on-demand videos. Uh, also, we do a Sunday night podcast, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we uh, do the Monday night strength of field races with the uh, B open or Xfinity open on the oval side. Uh, those are 8 p.m. on uh, Monday nights. Myself, Robert Cook, Scotty Stevens, we're all in here. Uh, we're commentating, commentating and uh, we're broadcasting those races for you guys as well. So hitting that bell icon gets you notified when all that great stuff goes up on the channel. And last on your way out, uh, check out the description uh, down below the video. And in that description, if you get, there should be a little uh, picture, a little uh, profile picture of the I, uh, icon for iRacing, uh, the iRacing game or the simulator icon there. Right below it, it should say show more. That will expand the description down. Always check out the description at the bottom of the videos. There's all kind of cool stuff down there and goodies for you guys. We really appreciate you being here. Tune in for this video, and I hope uh, this fixes the track map problem that you guys are having uh, in MoTeC that I found myself and a couple of y'all have been telling me about. Hope this gets you fixed up and on the path to success getting these tracks into MoTeC. For myself, Mike Howerton, everybody here at Area 51, we appreciate you being with us for this one. And as always, we will see you in the next one.